Hey, what's up guys? Airsoft Man 819 here again with another video. Uh, gonna be showing you guys uh, a car that I just bought. I normally don't make automotive related videos on my channel, but uh, well, the story behind this car is um, my best friend uh, moved into a town, a couple towns over from me about seven or eight years ago. And the first time I went down there to see him, there was one of these cars sitting at the corner a lot and I absolutely fell in love with it. Now that car was never put up for sale and it's still sitting there and that car was a 1980s Toyota MR2. And ever since then, I've had an extreme love and interest in the Toyota MR2. And here recently, out by where I work, uh, one came up for sale and it met all of my requirements I wanted to get an automatic and I also wanted to get the mark one with a square body like this and um, it's in amazing condition which is why I decided to go ahead and make this video showing it to you guys because it is absolutely stunning the condition of this car this is a 1989 MR2 T bar it's got the uh, 1.6 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder four speed automatic this car is bone stock except for the wheels and the exhaust back here. The exhaust was uh, recently redone. But these are rear wheel drive, rear engine, four cylinder cars. It's essentially like a mini Ferrari. That's why I like to call it a mini Ferrari because it's kind of got that square shape that a lot of the Ferraris in the early 90s had. It's kind of got that wedge shape going on. It is one of the most unique and attractive cars ever made, in my opinion. And it's made by a company that is known for durability and reliability. So you know it's going to be a reliable car, even though it has... Honestly, <clears throat> this car is kind of a, a trick to the eye, I should say. It looks like this untouchable, expensive, exotic car, when under the hood, it's just a Toyota. So you get the, both of, the best of both worlds. You get good gas mileage, you get extreme reliability and durability of the components like a Toyota, but you get the styling cues and the exotic look of like an exotic car. So, which is one reason I like these because they're reliable enough you can drive them every day, but you can look like a badass doing it. Now this is not the most practical car on the road. It is only a two seater and you have limited space to store your stuff but it's still a really neat car. So let's go ahead and get into it, okay? Show you guys the interior. Okay. Go ahead and get this key out of here to turn off that annoying buzzer. Okay, this is a regular old key. So your interior, like I said, you only have two seats the seat right there and obviously the driver center console like I said this is a, a four-speed automatic which is a rare uh, you had to actually spedal spedal yep that's exactly what you had to do you had to special order the automatic transmission in these cars so the automatics like this are the rarest of the cars because almost all of these had five-speed automatics I mean five-speed manuals what makes this car even more rare is it has the uh, factory alarm system, which was an option as well. Pretty well, they had two versions of this car. They had the supercharged and they had the naturally aspirated. The, as far as the naturally aspirated is concerned, um, this is the fully loaded version. It has every option available at the time. You have a little storage. It's not really storage. It's used for storage now, but it was an ashtray and you have a cigarette lighter right here. But you can also plug in your 12-volt. Uh, USB adapters and stuff to charge your phones, which I actually have up here. There's actually a little glove box between the two seats behind your head, so you can store phone charger cables or whatever you want in there. And you have a little storage cubby right there in the center. You have your glove box over here. Fairly decent sized glove box for a small car. Interestingly enough, you actually have an AC vent underneath the glove box which is kind of weird. It does have AC, by the way. There's your climate controls. It has heat and AC. The AC in this car does not work because it uses the old R12 
and uh, the system basically is going to have to be rebuilt and converted over to 134. But the heat in this car does work, works really well. Um, the factory stereo is a cassette player. Um, I do have the original stereo, but I wired up this JVC aftermarket with USB input. That way it could actually listen to music now because I really didn't feel like having a stack of cassette tapes in my car. Um, this does have pop-up headlights. I'll go ahead and stick the key in the ignition down here so you can guys see the headlights. You flip the switch. Well, this is the windshield wipers right here. Got to turn it all the way on. Okay. There's your windshield wipers. Okay. And this stock over here is your headlights. Flip it up all the way, and there's your headlights. And you pull back. This is your turning signal knob right here. You push forward on it to turn on your brights. So there's your brights right there. And to close them, obviously, you just turn this knob down. Closes your headlights. It does have a tilt wheel. This bar down here, you just pull it all the way down. <laughs> all the way down. And then you can adjust your steering wheel. Just like that. And pull it back up to lock it. Ugh. Have your mirror adjustments down here. You have your uh, rear defrost. Pretty well full featured for a car uh, that was made in 1989. You have your uh, does have cruise control as well. You've also got uh, overdrive on your transmission. Pretty well want to keep it on all of the time. Uh, I think that's pretty well it for the interior. Not really much else to see. Uh, it's in very good condition. As you can see, the seats are fully adjustable. They have lumbar and all that. Power windows and power locks. It's fully loaded for the time, like I said. All of your lock controls are over here on the door. You have your uh, power window right here. They both do work, which is a rarity on, on these cars because they're so old. And the passenger one works as well. And they've got their own little door lock and window control over there. And here's your door locks. This is your passenger window lock right here. Okay, so let's get out and take a look under the hood. Now, this car technically has two hoods and a trunk. So it's a little bit complicated, but it's not as bad as you might think. We'll take a look at that real quick. Okay, so to pop the actual hood where the engine... The engine resides under this cover right here. To get to it, there's a little tab behind the driver's seat, and you pull that up. Okay, you come around here, you just lift this cover up, and there's your engine. Now, the earlier versions of these cars from the uh, mid 80s had a 1.5 liter four cylinder. This car has the 1.6 that came later, which is a better engine. It's got a little bit more power and it's a little bit more reliable. Um, the, the nice thing about this car is they used this engine in several different Toyota models at the time. They used it in the uh, the Corolla that I know for sure, and they, I believe they used it in a couple other models at the time as well. So, there's your battery. I mean, it, the layout's a little bit funky because of where the engine's located, but the engine itself is fairly basic and fairly simple. Just a basic 16-valve, dual overhead cam, four cylinder there's your spark plugs in the top there's your intake coolant the coolant lines run all the way up to the front because the radiator is in the front so flushing the cooling system in these cars is fairly difficult to do because of that so I would recommend if you need a coolant flush to have a professional do that there's your engine oil dipstick down here it's kind of hard to reach but it is there your automatic transmission fluid is right there that's the um, speaker for the alarm system once again your throttle body intake cable driven obviously you have your cruise control and all of that your air box is over there all right so let's go ahead and close this up show you guys the rest of the nooks and crannies in this car because it is definitely weird and worth taking a look at click that down you just got to drop it a little bit because it's kind of it's getting the latch is kind of stiff just gotta let it slam a little bit and it'll close right up for you go back here and open the actual trunk which in this individual instance has to be done with the key because the cable on the inside is broken okay there's your trunk it's it's not i mean you can fit a few 12 packs of pop or beer or some groceries back here it's not unusable it's not a full-size trunk obviously it's about 
a half the size of a normal four-door sedan's trunk, but it's at least you have a trunk. A lot of exotic cars like this do not don't even give you that convenience. It has four-wheel disc brakes, which again is a pretty uh, luxurious feature for an 80s car because a lot of them had drums in the back. But four-wheel disc brakes. The brakes on this car are a little bit worn. I'll probably have to redo them soon. These are aftermarket rims, obviously. Aftermarket Eagle GT tires. Which I actually like it. Whoever had this car before me and put these rims on it had pretty good taste because overall I like it. And the hood, which... Loosely you can call it a hood. I don't really call it a hood because, well, it's not a hood, but... You pull the latch underneath the uh, steering wheel like you do on a hood, though. Okay, go up here. Pop the quote unquote hood. Gotta find the latch in here. There's, there it is. Just got an awkward one arm while I prop it up. Okay, there's that. You have your jack, spare tire. The spare tire is brand new, it's never been taken off. There's the cover for the spare tire. Down there is your uh, accessories for the jack. So if I break down, I'll be in good shape. This is an old car, so that is a concern. Your washer fluid is up here. Right underneath this cap, you can put your washer fluid in. Like I said, this car for 159,000 miles is in excellent condition. Here's your brake fluid right here. Sorry, my, camera's, my camera work is pretty bad. And the radiator is actually hidden underneath this cover, but it is there, and so is the condenser for the AC. So, a lot of lines to worry about, which is not always a good thing. When you have to flush the radiator or find a leak in the AC, it's pretty difficult to find. All right, so we'll start it up real quick. So you guys can hear what she sounds like with that dual exhaust. Sorry if my finger keeps coming into frame. This is my new iPhone 7 and I'm still learning how to film with it. Stick our key in there. 159,000. She's a bit slow to start when she's cold. Just give her a sec. Okay. She's idling a little bit high. Might need a little bit of work. But it's an almost 30 year old car. What do you expect? Okay, it's your e-brake by the way. One thing that irritates me about this car is the fact that it does not have cup holders. There are no cup holders anywhere. They have all of this space for cup holders, not a cup holder. I mean, I can kind of understand why, because on the manual cars, you'd have to keep your hand up here to shift it, but still, no cup holders in the whole car. You do have this nice little tray up here for your cell phone, which, I mean, obviously they weren't thinking about that in the 80s, but it's definitely a concern now. And, with the aftermarket stereo installed, I do have an extra little storage space down there as well. So, we'll go ahead and rev her up. All right, let's hop on out. I like the way the exhaust sounds. It's got a really deep, sound to it, especially for a four-cylinder. As you can see, the engine runs very smooth once it gets warmed up. Nice and quiet. Okay, close this up. Give you guys one last view of the car before I shut this thing off. There she is. 1989 MR2 T-Bar. Hope you guys enjoyed this little video. Appreciate you guys coming along for the ride and checking out my new car. I'll see you guys later.